what, this month is going to be a whole lot more different than what you had anticipated. I, I, I know you, you want your three points in a poem. I might sneak that in there. But let me just tell you more than anything else, I want you to once and for all find that breakthrough thing, that thing that's been stagnant where you've been spinning your wheels. And I'm not talking about just anything. I'm talking about the God-breathed, God-inspired, God-anointed thing that you that keeps you up at night sometimes. You're like, I know at, at the end of it all I know that God's going to hold me accountable for this and you've been spinning your wheels can you just believe God with me that breakthroughs are going to happen for people this month come on come on amen and listen and Chris is going to help me out this month listen I tell you what sometimes we got to get our game face on hey t- turn up Chris a little bit turn, Chris you hit that hit that volume but listen Chris is going to help me out a little bit this month listen you need not only inspiration you need a little bit of perspiration this month sometimes it takes a little bit of effort in order for you to actually move off of square a and get on down the road and do what God has called you to do amen I need everybody to stand to their feet. Come on, come on, church. Come on, church. Is there any praise in you this morning? Listen, it's time. It's time to get riled up. Some of you, hey, some of you guys and girls have played sports. Anybody in the house ever played sports? Come on, lift your hand. Let me just raise your hand. Okay, so I know I'm not talking to novices here. You understand what I'm saying? In the dugout, uh, on the sidelines. When you're getting ready to play the game on the side of the court, listen, many times before the players come out of the locker room, they've already had their pregame speech. They've already had their, their, their rally time. And I believe that God wa- that's what God wants us to have right now before the service. My pastor a long time ago said that God gave him a vision, opened up his eyes, and he saw the enemy and how they rally each other up to fight against you. And they were beating each other. They were biting each other. He says, you think you're going to live for God and you're not going to be on fire for him? Think again. I tell you what, the enemy may get fired up, but there's a Holy Ghost fire shut up in our bones that God wants us to experience. Somebody give God praise. So I need you to take your hands and hit them together like this. Say breakthrough. Say breakthrough. Say breakthrough. Say I believe. God's got good for me. He did it once and he'll do it again. I'm going to achieve what God has called me to in Jesus' name. And everybody said, come on, high five your neighbor and, and, and high five. Come on, go ahead and be seated. Now, I listen, I cannot preach this message if I don't have some amens in the house. Hey, can I get an amen? Can I get a thank you, Jesus? All right, y'all didn't know y'all were going to get this, but that's all right. Mm-hmm. To see the breakthrough. You have to have the breakthrough. To have the breakthrough, you got to see the breakthrough. To, to, to see the breakthrough, you got to have the breakthrough. First, it starts in here. And then, listen, that's why God says, if you draw unto me, I will draw unto you. You, you think, well, God loves me unconditionally. God does love you unconditionally, but his blessings are conditional. It's part of the covenant. If you do this, I will do that. And God wants everybody to be blessed. God wants everybody to be saved. God wants everybody to live in victory. Anybody here want God's victory? Amen. Amen. Come on, come on, listen. This is the year 2020. The, The word that the Lord gave me at the beginning of the year was 2020, vision. Man, that sounds like that everybody should have that, right? 2020 vision year, but seeing is not enough. Do you see what I'm saying? Seeing is not enough. Just believing it's not enough. There's so many of us that are on the edge of our breakthrough. How many of you feel that today? You're right there on the edge of a breakthrough. You're right there on the edge of a breakthrough. Can can I just get real with you real real quick? Some of y'all have been dealing with addictions for a long time. You're like, man, I, I, I think I'm getting better. I think I'm getting better. But every time I think I'm getting better, all of a sudden that thing comes around and bites me again. That thing I feared the most has come upon me. Listen, I, I have to tell you this. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. I just want to tell you to just stop looking at your addiction and start looking at your God. Listen, God is greater than bondage. Paul and Silas trapped up in that prison cell. They're beat up, lied on, cheated on. Sound like a bad blues song. 
Did they complain about it? No. They're chained up against that wall. <laughs> he said, we don't have anything else to do. We might as well praise him. When everything gets bad, why don't you just go ahead and praise him? There ain't nothing wrong with praising him. Praising you, you know, hey, that's never a waste of time. Just go ahead and praise him. They began to praise him about midnight. Listen, the, listen, the walls began to shake. The gates began to fail. The chains fell off. They're looking around. <laughs> time to get out of here. They take off. They talk. To every, everybody leaves out of the prison. And the jailer, y'all remember this? The jailer was standing there about ready to kill himself because he knew that it was a death sentence for all these prisoners getting out. He said, no, 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 don't harm yourself. We're all here. We're all here. He said, what must I do to be saved? He said, listen, let me tell you about him. Not only you will be saved, but your whole household. Come on, come on, come on, come on. I need to tell you something. Some of you guys are in what you would call a bad situation. And when you praise God and you give Him the glory, you tell them that are watching you go through your mess, somebody's going to get saved out of this thing. Will you believe God with me? It's not just about your breakthrough. It's about their breakthrough. On the edge of your breakthrough, on the edge right there, so many of us on the edge of our promised land. Everybody say promised land. The promised land I'm talking about is that thing that you know God has already given you a glimpse of that breakthrough, of that freedom. And not just to see the promised land, but to occupy the promised land, to sustain the promised land. Every one of us have a promised land. But for you occupying and living and getting into your promised land, that's not even up to God. That's up to you. You have to determine in your heart that you are going to walk into your promised land. He can show you exactly what it is, but if you choose to not go in, you can stay in the wilderness. You can stay in your bondage. It's not up to God. It's up to you. Well, I, well, well listen, aren't the promises of God yea and amen? The promises of God are yea and amen. God's a promise keeper. God never lies. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. If God said it, he meant it. That settles it. Write it down, head towards it. Because if he brought you to it, he, if, he, if he brought it to you in your heart, he will bring you to it. All you have to do is start heading towards him and live intimately with him. Somebody give him praise. It's a good God. We gotta live by faith. We gotta start believing God. Act like we serve a living, true, promise keeping God. We're believers. What is our lifestyle? Does our lifestyle say that we're a believer? Oh, more and more, I wanna act, I wanna live, I wanna speak, I wanna react like Jesus lives in my heart. How about you? Twelve spies went into the promise, went into the, went into the promised land there. They spied out the land for 40 days. Y'all remember that? One from each tribe. Ten spies came back with a bad report. Two spies came back with a good report of what they saw. Ten saw something contrary to what two saw. One saw a breakthrough. One saw defeat. One saw provision. One saw lack. What do you see today regarding your breakthrough? Do you see the excuses why you haven't been able to get it done up to this point? Or do you, do you actually see that maybe, just maybe, today is when you heard the message that got you unstuck and you just started taking a step? Everybody just needs to take one step. Numbers, come on, come on. Numbers 13.25. Talks about this story. It says, when they returned from spying out the land at the end of 40 days, they proceeded to come to Moses and Aaron and to all the congregation of the sons of Israel in the wilderness of Paran and Kadesh. They brought back word to them and all the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land. Thus they told him and said, we went to the land where you sent us, and it certainly does. It certainly does. Everybody say, it certainly does. It certainly does flow with milk and honey, and this is its fruit. 
grapes hanging between two poles, giant clusters. He said, and, they, and then they said, uh, nevertheless, I want you to know whenever you see nevertheless, what nevertheless is there for is to discount what was just said. How many of you got something that tries to discount what God is trying to tell you? Nevertheless, the people who live in the land are strong, and the cities are fortified and very large. And moreover, we saw the descendants of Anak there. Amalek is living in the land of the Negev, and the Hittites, and the Jebusites, and the Amorites, and the Parasites are living in the hill country. And the Canaanites are living by the sea, which is by, which is by the side of the Jordan. They're all griping, crying, complaining, and Caleb, the one who has an excellent spirit, <laughs> Caleb and Joshua, Caleb quieted the people before Moses and said, We should by all means go up and take possession of it, for we will surely overcome. But the men who had gone up with him said, We're not able to go up against this people, for they're too strong for us. How many of you know if it's too strong for you, it just might be the right size for God? So they gave out of the sons of Israel a bad report of the land which they had spied out, saying, The land! Through which we've gone out is in and spined it out as a land that devours its inhabitants, and all the people whom we saw in it were men of great size. And there we also saw the Nephilim, the son of Anak, is part of the part of the Nephilim, and we became like grasshoppers in our own sight, and so we were in their sight. What do you see? What do you see in reference? To your enemy. They saw themselves first as defeated before the enemy saw them being defeated. It's time you shake off that loser vision that you have of yourself. Come on, shake it off, church. Shake it off, church. It's time that you see yourself the way that God sees you. You are the head and not the tail. You are above and not beneath. You're more than conquerors through Christ Jesus. More than conquers. I want you to see something. What they saw cost them everything. They all died outside of their promised land. Here's the story. Let me give it to you real quick. They come back. We can go in. No, you can't. All the people started getting angry at Joshua and Caleb, and they, they began to pick up stones, and they're getting ready to stone Joshua and Caleb. They're getting ready, to, getting ready to crush them. And right behind them, here comes the, the glory of the Lord. A cloud begins to come in and hover over the top of them. And God has a side conversation with Moses. He said, Moses, I have uh, an idea today. What I would like to do, Moses, is I want to go ahead and just kill them all, except for Joshua and Caleb. I want to just go ahead and just kill them all. And then, hey, uh, Moses, we'll just start over with you, and we'll just make a whole brand new group of people. God's like, I got all the time in the world. I, I created that. Well, I can make a whole new people. It's no big deal. We got this. And what I love about the heart of Moses, heart of a good leader, I'll tell you what, you need, to pray for, you need to pray for godly leaders. Listen, you may be a godly leader. You need people praying for you. Listen to what I'm saying. Moses said, no, 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 don't, don't, do, the, don't do this, God. Listen, remember covenant. He said, uh, this is what the, the surrounding territory is going to say, that you weren't able to sustain them and keep them, so you tried to go kill them in quiet, and then your reputation is at stake. So, so please don't do that. God relented. How many of you know God can relent? Uh, I don't know if you know this. God's relented on me a few times. I think he's relented on you once or twice, too. But God said this to that rebellious generation. He said, I'm going to judge you one year for every day you went in and spied out the land. Forty days equals 40 years. And this griping, complaining, unbelieving generation is going to die in the wilderness. But their children that don't know anything about this is going to rise up and they're going to go into the promised land. Oh, and the exception is... Joshua and Caleb, the ones that came back with a good report, the ones with an excellent spirit, they get to go in too. Come on, come on, somebody give God praise. Listen, listen, everybody else may try to give up, but you don't have to give up. It doesn't matter what everybody else says. What does God say? God wants us to get in to our promised land. we got to act upon what God is saying to us and what God is showing us. 
You got to look at Joshua chapter 1 1. And listen, before the book of Joshua, we see what the previous books were written about. Moses is on the edge of the promised land, up on the mountain, looking down. Moses says this God, can I please, can I please? I know I just messed up bad one time. I, I, I hit the rock instead of speaking to the rock, and I did it in a dishonorable way. Can I, can I please go into the promised land? God said, I don't want to hear any more about this. You're not going in. But Joshua is. And what I need you to do is go ahead and write it one more time. Write the history. Write the covenant. Write the law. Write it all out. Because when they go into the land, they need to know exactly how to live successfully. And he writes these words out. And the very next thing, here's Joshua 1.1. It says, Now it came about after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' servant, saying, Moses, My servant is dead. Now, therefore, arise, cross this Jordan, you and all this people, to the land which I am giving to them, to the sons of Israel. Look at this. You need to see this in your own life. Every place on which the sole of your foot treads, I have given to you, just as I spoke to Moses. From the wilderness in this Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, and all the land of the Hittites, as far as the great sea, towards the setting of the sun, will be your territory. Hey, somebody grab this with me. No man will be able to stand before you all the days of your life. Can somebody grab this? No no addiction is going to be able to subdue you all the days of your life. No attack on your marriage is going to be able to survive your marriage all the days of your life. Can somebody come on, agree with me. Listen, I'm telling you, God's trying to show you something today. Just as I've been with Moses, I will be with you. I will not fail you or forsake you. Be strong and courageous. You hear what I'm saying? Be, he said this one time. Be strong and courageous. For you shall give this people possession of the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. He said it again. Be strong and courageous. Be careful to do all according to the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Don't turn from it. Don't turn to the right or to the left so you may have success where you go. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night. So you may be careful to do according to all that's written in it, for then you'll make your way prosperous and you will have success. Here it is one more time. Have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous. Do not tremble or be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Hey, come on, somebody give God praise. He's with us wherever we go. That's what Joshua says to them. You know what they said? We're going to follow you. We're going to follow you. As we followed Moses, we're going to follow you. Joshua's first victory I'm going to talk about it later on in the month. But his first victory, just just so you know this, sometimes in order to see it, you got to be it. Sometimes you got to be it before you actually see it clearly. But what God wants us to do is get our mouth in line with our eyes, in line with our with, with our heart, mouth, eyes, heart, and we work in unison together with the Spirit of God. Listen, the first victory, it came about, with a shout. It came about, listen, when the walls of Jericho fell, it came about with a shout. He said this, listen, right on the other side of this Jordan River, Jordan means death. I don't know if y'all know that. Sometimes sometimes we got to walk past, we got, we got to walk through some dead stuff to get to our promised land. I got one right out of it. Sometimes, and listen, sometimes in order to get our breakthrough, what we have to do is we just, what we need to do, what Joshua told them, he said, here's the, here's the command. He said, I need you for six days. I need you to walk around the city of Jericho. Six days, I need you to walk around the city of Jericho. Oh, oh and just a little side, a little bit of instruction. I need everybody to completely put the shut up. Shut to their up on their mouth. Nobody says one word. Everybody is completely silent. Why did God tell Joshua to tell them to be completely quiet? Because sometimes we got to walk it out before we can talk it out. 
Sometimes we gotta, sometimes we gotta walk it out. We get we gotta walk it out. We gotta head towards God just a little bit. But sometimes we gotta walk at walk in faith before we start talking because if we're not careful, we'll talk ourselves out of the breakthrough. Sometimes, come on, so sometimes we gotta walk it out. Six days. Seven days. Seven is the number of perfection. I don't know if y'all know that. Seven days. So on seventh day, walk seven times. And when the shout came, when the trumpets blast, they, they gave a shout to the Lord. And when they gave the shout, the walls fell down flat and they took the city. I want you to know sometimes the breakthrough comes when you finally get your mouth lined up with what God shows you. Somebody give God praise. It's about time to shout. Shout to the Lord. Give Him praise. He's got a breakthrough for us. Joshua's last victory was more important, I think, than his first victory. At the end of Joshua's life, Joshua chapter 24, starting in verse 13, Joshua is actually speaking prophetically for God to the people, giving them the final history lesson of the victories that God gave them in the promised land, but also talk to them about their temptations to serve other gods. But Joshua also says, hmm, I don't know what else you guys are going to do, but watch what I do. Joshua says, I, he said, the Lord is speaking through Joshua to the people, 24, 13. He says, I gave you a land in which you had not labored in cities which you had not built, and you've lived in them, and you're eating the vineyards and the olive groves which you did not plant. Now, therefore, fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and truth, and put away the gods which your father served beyond the river and in Egypt to serve the Lord. If it's disagreeable in your sight to serve the Lord, then choose for yourselves today who you will serve. Whether the God of your fathers which were served beyond the river or the gods of the Ammonites, which is in the land that you're living. And then he says, but as for me in my house, but as for me in my house, we're going to serve the Lord. You got to get that settled in your heart. You may live in a place, you may live in a culture that nobody wants to live for God. But what do you say about that? I just have to tell you as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. I, I'm getting that settled in my heart right now. Listen, everybody else that did the drug that you were doing that says they can't get off of it. Listen, if God sets you free, He who the Son sets free is free indeed. You don't have to stay hooked. You can get broke up off from that. And listen, He's the one that breaks the chains. I tell you what, as for me and my house, they're going to serve the Lord. I'm just going to give my kids just a little side message real quick. I tell you what, if you ever think you're not going to live for Jesus... I got a sleeping bag and a pillow with my name on it. And when, when I, I will sleep outside your house. We're going to ask for me in my house. We're going to live for Jesus. We're going to live for Jesus. Listen, my house is going to be a house that's dedicated to Jesus. I don't know. He said, well, man, what, what if they don't like that? Too bad. John Osteen said a long time ago, if the cat don't like the way it's being rubbed, the cat need to go ahead and turn around. We're going to live for God. I tell you what, some of the most powerful moments in your life uh, is going to be when you draw a line in the sand and you make a declaration to yourself, to the rest of the world, and to the Lord. Stand to your feet. The sermon ain't over. I know what time it is. Come on, come on, listen, listen. So I'm telling the powerful moments in your life is when you draw a line in the sand, you make a declaration to yourself and to the Lord, and I need you to say this with me. Say, I will live for Jesus for the rest of my life. Oh, we're going to say that again. Say, I will live for Jesus for the rest of my life. Say this. Say, I will run my race. I will finish my course. Say, I'm never giving up. I'm never giving in. Say it again. I'm never giving up. I'm never giving in. Come on, high five somebody and sit down. We're not done. We're almost done. Say, say, pastor's almost done. I don't know what happened to him today, but he's almost done. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. You know what next comes after that is what happens to your feet. What happens to your feet we got to make our feet line up with what faith is. Faith is what comes from God. 
There's demonic faith. I ain't talking about that. I just want you to know I'm not talking about some name it and claim it theology. I know some people get it all messed up. If I, if all of a sudden, if I do everything great, then I can ask God for a plane. He's just going to give me a plane. There's this certain car that I want. Okay, so I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to go work in the nursery. I'm going to change diapers for the next year and a half. That's my business plan. And then God's going to give me that Bentley. That's so, that's so not smart. That's so not smart. God just looks at that and says, man, that's manipulation. Here's the thing. You, you can manipulate everybody else, but you can't manipulate God. Ah, did you hear what I said? What we need to do is get a fresh vision from God, a fresh impartation, an intimate connection with God and say, whatever it is that you want, that's what I want. Whatever you want me to do, that's what I want to do. And watch God's blessing be poured out upon your life. I'm talking about acting upon what God is stirring in our hearts. Let me just give you some rock-solid word. This, will, this is what will help you. Psalms 37.3 says, Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and cultivate faithfulness. That means you're working at it all the time. I'm going to be faithful. Listen, I'm, go- I'm going to be faithful. I'm going to cultivate faithfulness. You know what? I- I- I'm more faithful to the Word of God now because I got people that I- that pray with me and read the Word with me on the daily all the time. We got to cultivate faithfulness. We need to hold each other accountable. There's a really dumb country song that was on the radio a long time ago. It popped up on, I guess we we're in a restaurant somewhere, and Amy was with me. And, you know, the thing about music, it'll stick with you, good or bad. And a song comes on the radio, and it says, I'll try to love only you. Oh, darling, I'll try. And she looked at me like, well, you're going to what? <laughs> try is try and doers do. <laughs> we're in this, buddy. We're in this. We're in this. We're, listen, she didn't have to. She told me that one time. And guess what? The last time I sang that, and this this time that I just sang it was the only other song, only other time I ever sang that song. Because I ain't trying. I'm not trying to be faithful. I'm faithful. How about you? We need to be faithful. We need to cultivate faithfulness. Oh, I'm going to try to go to church. No, 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 no. Go ahead and set the alarm. You, if you want to be, be to church on time, go ahead and set it 15 minutes early. And here's the good thing about getting to church early at River of Praise. The coffee will be waiting on you when you get here. You can have the, your pick of the seats. Oh, we need to cultivate faithfulness. Uh, just ask God, what is it that you, who do you want me to be a blessing to? God's looking for people just like that. God, I want to be a blessing to somebody today. He'll put somebody in your path. He always does. It says in verse 4, delight yourself in the Lord, and he'll give you the desires of your heart. And look at verse 5. He says, commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in him. Look at this. Watch this. And he will do it. <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute. I thought I was going to really have to work hard. Jesus said my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Listen, living for Jesus isn't hard when we stay close to him. What he's called you to, he's equipped you for. He will open doors that no man can shut. Somebody give God praise. Here's the golden nugget, and I'm on my last page, and watch how fast this goes. When you spend intimate time with the Lord and He begins to stir your heart towards something that He's showing you or be a part of and believe Him for, He begins to bring clarity like never before. I don't even know what my next step is. Well, take that step that's already in front. Hey, just worry about this one right here. Worry about the next step. Hey, occupy that spot and watch and see if God don't give you what the next step is. Because Jesus said, Jesus said, I'm the author and the finisher of your faith. (laughs) He's going to finish that good work. He said he's going to start. Believing's not enough. There's got to be actions that follow. Listen, I need to tell you this. Every demon in hell believes in Jesus. They tremble at the mention of his name. Believing ain't enough. Oh, we got to yield to God and let him have his way. James 2.17 says, faith without works is dead. So listen, if you're stuck in that place of just believing, but you seem to be going nowhere, like your spiritual tires are spinning and you just can't seem to get it done, well, this is a really, really Good message for you. Will you stand to your feet? We're going to pray in just a second, but i got to give you. Here it is. Here it is. 
Jesus said this in John 15. He said, if you abide in me and my word abides in you, ask whatever you wish and it'll be done for you. If you abide in me and my word abides in you, ask what you will. The, the key word in this whole thing, the, the key, the key, the, the, the mechanism, the start button is abiding in God. God, what do you want? The other night, I was in a place where there was no light pollution. I just look up, and for whatever reason, it was the most starlit sky I've ever seen in my life. And I'm standing there looking up, and I just simply, because I know where, because I knew where I was going this weekend, and I just, just was meditating in it. And I said, God, I just, I just want what you want. Thank you for what, how you've blessed us. And I love the season we're in at River of Praise. I love the season I'm in with my kids and my wife and my friends. But God, I just want what you want. I just want what you want. I just want to do what you want me to do. Just lead me, Jesus. Lead me, Jesus. Can, can, can I just encourage you? Get to that intimate place with him. He said, and you know what? If you abide in me and my word abides in you, it's going to be done for you. You want the true sustainable breakthrough that he wants for you? Look at this. Matthew chapter 6, verse 9, the beginning of the Lord's Prayer. It's not just a model. It's just not a, it's not just a sweet prayer. The, the Lord's Prayer shows the economy of heaven and how he wants us to live. Jesus said, he said, pray like this. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. And watch this. Here's how we pray. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Can, can, can I just say this? We're all earth. We came from earth. So when we say on earth, don't point at the ground in front of you. Point at the ground inside of you. In earth, your kingdom come, your will be done in earth as it already is in heaven. Your breakthrough's coming this month if you just if you just grab a hold of Jesus. He's going to give you that next step, amen. Come on, somebody give him praise. Now, I want you to pray real quick. We're going to ask the Lord to open up our eyes so that we can see. So what I want you to do is I want you to take your hands, put them over your eyes just real quick. If you want to look, that's fine, but this is really, this is really, I felt like this is how he wants us to do it. Put your hands on your eyes and just say this with me. Say, Lord Jesus, help me to see what you want me to see. Touch my heart that it would see more of what you want. Your kingdom come. Your will be done in me, God. I want what you want. Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sins when I didn't see things right. Heal me. Be my Lord and Savior. Show me where to go how to touch others this day and for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, come on, give me praise one more time.